afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to live story time. My name is Miss Mary and it's good to be back in the seat and I'm just going to again wait for some people to arrive before I get started. As always, um, when you do pop in, please be sure to say hello in the comments so that I can give you a shout out. So um, I'm so glad you're all here for this week's story time. This week, we are imagining our story in the land and time of dinosaurs. So I have some great, great stories for you today. And I am going to try my best to pronounce the dinosaur names in one book. I did practice beforehand, but some of those dinosaur names are pretty challenging. So <laughs> I might make a mistake. And if I do, I apologize. I hope it's not your favorite dinosaur that I make a mistake with. Um, hi, Diana. Welcome to story time. <gasps> hi, Abby. Hi, Logan. Oh, I'm so glad he's here, and he is going to be hearing a couple of his favorites, too, because Abby is one of my friends and co-workers, and she recommended some great stories for me today, including one that I just got such a big kick out of um, when I read it for the first time. So I hope you all enjoy it, too. So um, again, just pop into the comments and say hello, and without further ado, let's get started with our story. Oh, before I forget, look who's behind me. Kermit. Okay, so Kermit was actually on vacation too last week. And, um, you know, he had a lot of fun. He just needed a little break. You know, he had a lot of fun on his vacation though. And I'm actually going to link you to a post from my Miss Mary the Librarian page that shows you all of the adventures that Kermit had while he was on vacation. So I'm just going to put that in the comments. Hopefully that's the right link. We'll see. <laughs> um, it's a very long link, but um, it should take you right to the page with all of Kermit's adventures. So um, now let's get started. And again, if you have arrived, Please say hello in the comments and I'll make sure to give you a wave and a shout out after my first story. So, first story today is called Adopting a Dinosaur by Jose Carlos Andres. Okay, adopting a dinosaur. Never thought of that before. Monday. I want a dog. I want a dog. I want a dog. On Tuesday, I want a cat. I want a cat. I want a cat. On Wednesday, I want a turtle. I want a turtle. I want a turtle. <laughs> On Thursday, I want a parrot. I want a parrot. I want a parrot. Or a spider, a spider, a spider. On Friday, I want a chicken. I want a giraffe. On Saturday and Sunday, I want a pig. No, 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 better yet, I want an elephant. But Allie's parents would always answer, animals at home, no way. On her way home from school, Allie found an enormous egg in the park. Since it looked abandoned, she decided to take it back to her house. See the egg? Hmm. She tried to hide it, but it didn't fit anywhere. 
Oh my, it is quite big. Pretty obvious that you're hiding something, right? <laughs> On Tuesday, Allie called the egg chemo. She painted two eyes and a red nose on him and added a mop for hair. On Wednesday, she polished Chemo and lit a lamp beside him so that he would stay warm. See? On Thursday, in the evening, she covered him with a blanket and told him a story. On Friday, the egg hatched. Crack, crack, crack. A few seconds later, a big head appeared and said, Roar! I want a dinosaur! I want a dinosaur! I want a dinosaur! Allie's parents thought that was impossible, so they answered, Okay, if you find one, we'll adopt it. They didn't know. <laughs> Allie came out of her room hugging a baby saltosaurus. Dad, Mom, this is chemo. Whoa, 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 that's a dinosaur. On Saturday, after the initial shock wore off, it turned out that chemo was very sweet. But not for everyone, because in the park, he frightened a few people. Chemo, Allie, and the other kids played together and had loads of fun. Suddenly, the earth began to shake and Chemo heard a familiar sound. He pricked his ears, scratched his back on a tree, and roared with a smile. At that moment, Two huge saltosauruses appeared. When they saw their baby, they began to lick him and they huddled together. Oh, he found his family. Chemo left with his parents, but first he said goodbye to Allie and her family. The house seemed very empty when Chemo left. Why don't we adopt a dog, a cat, or a turtle, or a parrot, or a chicken, a pig, a giraffe, or an elephant? Allie missed Chemo so much, but she didn't want another animal. Because from time to time, they would have a visit, a very special visit. is the story of adopting a dinosaur. Okay, I don't see any new comments. So hopefully that post that I um, linked to brings you to that post. And I'm also going to link to this week's dinosaur themed activity guide. So many cool things on it for you and your family to play with. Links. Um, that lead to games and crafts and dinosaur facts and things like that. So um, make sure you check that out. I'm linking to it right now. And again, if you are here, please say hello in the comments and I make sure to give a shout out. And I also wanted to just show my shirt for today. And it says, throw kindness around like confetti. Loved it. Okay. So... Let's read, this is probably my favorite story that I've read in a long time and definitely my favorite story for this week. I just thought this one was fantastic. So this is called, We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins. I certainly hope we don't eat our classmates. Here we go. Penelope Rex was nervous. It's not every day a little T-Rex starts school. What are my classmates going to be like? Will they be nice? How many teeth will they have? 
This was all very important. Penelope's mom bought her a new backpack with ponies on it. Ponies were Penelope's favorite because ponies are delicious. Penelope's dad packed her a lunch of 300 tuna sandwiches. Oh my. And one apple juice. <laughs> Doesn't really seem like enough to wash down all those sandwiches, but <laughs> maybe it's enough for a T-Rex. Finally, the big day came, and Penelope Rex was very surprised to find out that all of her classmates were... What do you think? Children! So she ate them. Because children are delicious. Penelope Rex, said Mrs. Noodleman, we do not eat our classmates. Please spit them out at once. So she did. She didn't know. Oh my, they're all soggy. Look, yuck. It was not the best way to start school. Still, Penelope was determined to have a good first day. She tried hard to make friends at recess. She finger painted some of her best work. She even saved Griffin Emery a seat at lunch. You can sit here. He seems a little nervous though. Penelope started to notice Everyone was making friends except her. It was lonely. When she got home, her dad asked about her first day of school. I didn't make any friends, Penelope cried. None of the children wanted to play with me. Penelope Rex, her father asked. Did you eat your classmates? Um, w well, maybe sort of just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to make friends, said her dad, especially if you eat them. You see, Penelope, children are just the same as us on the inside, just tastier. That gave Penelope a lot to think about. The next day, Penelope tried really hard. But poor Penelope, she could not stop herself from eating her classmates. Um, Mrs. Noodleman, Penelope ate William Amoto again. Poor Penelope. And they were all afraid of her. You see, they're all running away. Except Walter. Walter was a goldfish. So Penelope tried to make friends with him. Will you be my friend? And look, she's sticking her little finger in the tank. <gasps> Chomp! <laughs> Uh-oh. Eee! Cried Penelope, he's eating my finger! Once Penelope found out what it was like to be someone's snack, she lost her appetite for children. <laughs> she stopped eating her classmates, even when Cece Woodman spilled barbecue sauce all over herself. And soon Penelope made friends. <gasps> found ya! Want a brownie? I helped make them. Now, even when children look especially delicious, she peeks at Walter and remembers what it's like when someone tries to eat you. And Walter, the goldfish, stares right back at her and licks his lips. Oh my. Because dinosaurs are delicious. <laughs>
Okay, I just loved that book. Um, I thought it was so creative and so funny. Um, good little lessons in there. Um, hi, Stephanie, best book ever. This is one of my favorites that I've read in a long time. I just, I loved it. I read it to everyone at work list, whether they wanted to hear it or not. I, I read it to them. So, um, Thank you again for tuning in to Live Storytime. It's so great to be back. I was off last week, and we posted a uh, recorded, a pre-recorded video of me reading a story. But it's always great to be here at Live Storytime. Um, so again, welcome. And if you missed the first story, um, the replay video will be available as soon as I click end on this live video. So um, you won't miss a thing. You can just check out the replay as soon as this live video is over. So again, this week we are imagining our story in the land and time of dinosaurs. And I've read two books so far. I have two more to go. And let's see what's next, okay? This one is called Brontorina by James Howe. Okay, have you ever imagined a dinosaur who could dance? Let's see what happens in this story, okay? Brontarina had a dream. I want to dance. You are a dinosaur, Madame Lucille pointed out. True, Brontarina replied, but in my heart, I am a ballerina. She is too big and she doesn't have the right shoes. Hmm. Madame Lucille wondered what to do. She had never had a dinosaur as a student before. Dinosaurs were rather large, right? They're pretty big. And this one certainly did not have the right shoes. But then she felt Clara and Jack tugging at her skirt. Oh, please, they pleaded. Madame Lucille looked into the dinosaur's eyes. What is your name, my dear? Brontorina, Brontorina Apatosaurus. I even sound like a dancer, don't you agree? Madame Lucille did agree. How could she not? Okay, so let's see what happens. Welcome to Madame Lucille's Dance Academy for girls and boys, she said. Please try not to squash the other dancers. Music, Magnolia, she commanded the piano player. As Magnolia began to play, Madame Lucille turned her commands to her students. <laughs> Plie, releve, oh no, ouch. Arabesque, jete. Oh, the ceiling is definitely having some trouble with Brontarina. <laughs> what a graceful dancer you are, my dear, Madame Lucille exclaimed. Brontarina blushed. On the outside, I am a dinosaur, but in my heart. You are a ballerina, cried Clara and Jack. Hm. She still doesn't have the right shoes. In the weeks that followed... Help! Look out! Hey, watch your tail! The piano! Oh, Brontarina, cried Madame Lucille. I'm afraid you are too big to be a ballerina. You barely fit in my studio. And how in the world will a male dancer ever lift you over his head? I could do it, Jack shouted. No, my dear, said Madame Lucille with a sigh. You could not. I told you she was too big. A tear fell from Brontarina's eye. 
downcast, she turned to leave. Wait, Clara called out. Don't go. My mother has been working on a surprise for you all week, Brontarina. She is bringing it today. Whatever are you talking about, Madame Lucille asked Clara. Just then, Clara's mother appeared at the door. You must be Brontarina, she said, holding out the surprise. I hope these will fit. Look, now she has the right shoes. Brontarina beamed. They fit perfectly, she cried. I am a ballerina. Or I would be, if only I weren't so big. Oh, fiddlesticks, said Madame Lucille. Why didn't I see it before? The problem is not that you are too big. The problem is that my studio is too small. And so the whole class went off to look for a studio big enough to hold all of Brontarina's talent. Too small? Too small. Still too small? Still too small. I have an idea. Okay, he has an idea. Now, Madame Lucille's Dance Academy had room for everyone, and now it's called Madame Lucille's Outdoor Dance Academy for Girls and Boys and Dinosaurs <laughs> and Cows. I want to dance. Then you must, my dear. And the shoes are available in all sizes. And it all began with a dream. So that is the story of Brontarina. Okay. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to live story time. My name is Miss Mary. Um, so glad you could join me this week. And um, just again, a reminder that um, you can watch the replay video as soon as I end the live video today. It will be available on our um, library's Facebook page. And I've linked to our themed activity guide for the week about dinosaurs in the comments, as well as a link to the post about all of the fun adventures that Kermit went on when he was on vacation. So be sure to check that out too. And um, before I start, my last story, which again, this is the one that has the real dinosaur na um, names in them. So I'm going to do my best to pronounce everything correctly. Some of those dinosaur names are very hard to pronounce. Um, I just wanted to remind all of you that the library is open for limited walkthrough service. The library does look different than um, it has in the past. The, there are no toys out right now um, no games and the seating is limited but we would love to see you and maybe we could um, help you pick out some new books to read at home um, or some new movies or just come in and say hello um, we'd love to see you I um, just wanted to let you know that again the, the building looks a little bit different but we'd love to see you um, here at the library and if you're still feeling a little uncomfortable about coming in. We completely understand that too. Um, give us a call and tell us what kind of books you're interested in for your child or for yourself. And we can put them on hold for you and you'd be able to make a curbside pickup appointment. So that is another option for you if you're feeling a little nervous about coming in, which um, completely understandable. But again, we would just love to be able to help you in any way possible. So um, those are two options for you. Come in in person or give us a call and we'll help you out the best we can. So um, here we go. This next book, my last book of the day, is called 
Cra Nash Gnaw Dinosaur. And these are actually prehistoric poems with Lift the Flaps. I'm going to try my best. I did practice reading this already, but um, with the small screen, I want to make sure that the flaps all show <laughs> for you. Okay. Here we go. Hi, where are the dinosaurs? We lived long ago. We're back in this book with a big hello. Come and see us moving as we sh slosh through the swamp. Come and watch us eating as we chomp, chomp, chomp. Some of us are massive and tower up tall. Some of us are tiny, ever so small. Some roam the prairie, sw some swim the sea, and some ride the breezes, flying round free. There are many kinds of dinosaur here for you to meet. So dip into these pages for a dinosaur treat. Okay, Diplodocus, that's me, hello, with my long, lithe neck, whoa! I can sweep around low. If I see lush leaves at the top of the trees, I can crane up high and crop them with ease. But although I am peaceful and plodding and slow, if you annoy me, you'll get a hard blow. Don't try to fight me, to bite and to rip, or you'll learn that my tail is a strong, swift whip. Okay, Diplodocus. Ooh, Pteranodon. I am Pteranodon. Just look at me, sweeping and gliding and flying so free. Whoosh, splash. As ace hang glider, air current rider, cliff top swooper, looper de looper. Watch how my leathery wings spread wide, helping me hover and wheel and glide. Watch how I roll from the cliffs with a wee, swooping to scoop up a fish from the sea. Ah, Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus, I am the boss. I'm also the fiercest, so don't make me cross. Whoa, this one's big. Roar! Try and spread this one out. Here we go. Okay. My legs are like pillars. They shudder the ground. The others will tremble to hear such a sound. They try to avoid me. They fear for their necks. They don't want to end up as snacks for T-Rex. Hey, Tyrannosaurus, you think that you're tough? Well, my name's Triceratops. I like to play rough. I'm fast and I'm heavy with a big bony frill. It covers my neck, so I'm tricky to kill. Don't be too ready to try out your brawn. You might feel the point of a long, sharp horn. Oh, and out on the prairie, what's the word? I like to hang out with a whole hard herd. Whoa. Chronosaurus. I am Big Head Chronosaurus, monster of the deep. Gliding through the ocean, I doze but never sleep. Fear me in the daylight, fear me in the dark, fear me for I seem to be a prehistoric shark. My jaws are really massive, my paddles give me speed, so swim your way to safety when it's time for me to feed. Mononychus. Look at me, Mononychus. What on earth am I? A weird kind of dino bird that cannot even fly. My wings look like a ballet skirt. A funny mass of fluff. They make me seem so silly. I wish that I looked tough. I'd like to be a dinosaur, but have to be a bird. And with my beak and feathers. <laughs> well, don't I look absurd? Aw, oh, they're all laughing at him. He can't help what he looks like, though. Oh, Dionychus. We are the Dionychuses, ready to attack. Watch us as we race along, running in a pack. We're cunning, yes, we're clever, and we mean to get our prey. We hunt it down together so it never gets away. 
Our toenails are our weapons. Each one is like a knife. So when you hear us coming, whoa, get running for your life. And those are all the dinosaurs we learned about in this book. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming to live story time today. I hope you enjoyed this week's stories. And, of course, I will be back next week with even more stories. But I'm not telling you what the theme is. It's a surprise, so you'll have to wait and see. And um, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Stay cool. It has been very hot out. So stay cool. Um, stay safe. Stay healthy. Um, come visit us at the library if you would like, and we'd love to see you. And until next week with more stories, this is Miss Mary signing off. And if you missed anything from today, just check out that uh, replay video as soon as I end the video. Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend.